how to take advantage of tax breaks and benefits that are out there. And I'm really excited about this topic. And um, we've got Neil and Fred on the line that are going to be talking a little bit about their background and how it relates to this industry. But you know, as a little preface to this, as they get ready to talk, one of the things that we've said over and over again is that this really does not exist in the industry. And it's really interesting when I work in other uh, industries um, with our parent consulting firm, Devoted Enterprises, we see people taking advantage of tax breaks, but I don't see that in the pawn industry. And I'm excited about what uh, what these guys can bring to the table. And so I want to get a little bit of background from you guys and welcome you uh, to this uh, first webinar here. And we've got Neil and Fred. Thank you. Good to be here. All right. Yes, yeah, so I think we're going to have Neil kick us off. You want to give us a little bit of background uh, on you guys and your experience and and we'll take it from there. Okay. Actually, I was introduced to this by Kathy Gumbiner with Hall of Fame Financial. And when she told me about this, the first thing that occurred to me was I needed to reach out to Fred Sade. Fred is a colleague and a confederate of mine. We've worked together for several years and specifically working on various cases uh, with small business or with families. Together, we have between 65 and 70 years of uh, combined experience in financial services. And in, in particular, Fred brings a wealth of experience working with small business owners, uh, but he also has a PhD in economics from Duke University. So from understanding the big picture, uh, there's, he's second to none. So I just had to get Fred involved in this. We work primarily with, with families and small business owners with strategies to both accumulate wealth and transfer it away from family held business in a tax advantaged way. And it's interesting as I was sitting here listening to you talking with Steve Stalkup talking about selling your business, which seems like a theme uh, within this industry. It occurred to me that there are really three different values that small business owners have when it comes to selling their business. The first is their intrinsic value or their economic value. What's, what's the business worth? The second one is the market value. What's someone willing to pay for it at the end of the day? I mean, that's really the bottom line when you're trying to sell your business is can someone or is someone else willing to pay for it? But the third and also a very important consideration is what is the business worth to Uncle Sam? And as you all know, right. as small business owners, Uncle Sam is a silent partner who stands over your shoulder and is willing to step in and take from the till uh, frequently, starting with sales tax. But it doesn't end by there by any stretch of the imagination. And we always believe it's not what you, you make that counts as a small business owner. It's what you keep that counts at the end of the day. So what we're trying to do here is to help you structure your your business and your wealth strategies in such a way that you keep more. Yeah, and that's great. I like what you said about Uncle Sam because, you know, as a business owner, once again, I need to even get more engaged with you guys because, you know, it seems like I'm paying in every year. I need to have more opportunity and more options in that scenario. And it's true when you sell and you have, uh, a large business that you're selling and you've got a lot of money that's coming in for that sale, what do you do from the tax side of it? But in general, as your business grows and you start to make more money, what should you be doing with it? How do you keep more money uh, in your pocket? That's very interesting. And it sounds like uh, Fred might be the smartest guy in the room at our convention in uh, in, in Florida. I'm, 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 in Florida, I'm a little uh, nervous. Uh, what do you have to add about your background, Fred, that we haven't heard yet? Well, uh, the, the the only couple of things that I might uh, add to uh, what I thought was Neil's very excellent uh, presentation was that right now taxes are on sale, mm -hmm. and they're going to be on sale for at least two more years, and we will just you have to we will have to see obviously what happens, but you have to act on the basis of what you know uh, and what's in front of you, and, and not on all the might might be so uh when neil points out uh, that uh, it's not what you earn it's what you keep and that's that's very relevant uh, for for a business owner because business owners don't often distinguish 
you know their their um their retirement value or uh from the value of the business they they seem to combine uh the two and it's important to be able to to separate them because there are things that you can do for the individual and there are things that you can do uh for the for the business and some of that can be i don't want to step on anybody's toes of course but some of that can be wrapped up in the in the exit strategy and, and how you and, and how you get your equity out and to the extent that you can get that equity out tax-free you're way ahead of the game than someone that has to pay ordinary income or capital gains above basis uh, on 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 the value of the business that's not already been depreciated, especially when you have real estate, and real estate becomes very tricky because of depreciation. So I I think that that um, uh, you know for now at least I think that helps wrap up uh, where I would uh, be coming from, and then uh, uh, we 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 also look uh, at, and be Neil's um, area to do. Or we can look at the individual. Uh, the side of of this and 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 draw that uh, separation uh, bec- because uh, the uh, individual assets as well as business assets are both in play uh, and b- to be able to take advantage of of the lowest tax rates that we that we have uh, ever uh, seen except and we haven't seen the uh, the Mellon tax reform in 1925. <laughs> Any of us were right, around. Right. <laughs> Yeah, none but, of us are uh, around for that. No, but considering that these are the lowest tax rates that we uh, higher, th- these tax rates are lower than any tax rate that existed in the uh, 20th century, except for that brief period, and, and uh, the lowest tax rates that we that we have uh, uh, now for some period of time. So that's that's where right, I would right. I would leave it. Yeah, no, Sorry. I agree, and I and I like what you. No, you're good. I like what you said because you know, to me, the two things that stood out there is there is the difference, and you've got to have a plan from you know from an individual standpoint, but you also have to have um, an idea and a plan from the business standpoint, and then those are also two separate. You know, how do you keep more of what you make in that sense? Um, the other thing is, you know, that the tax side of it. There's a lot of misinformation, as you guys know. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. There's a lot of misinformation out there, and there's also a lot of fear and sometimes fear mongering, which gets people uh, even, you know, stressed out or too stressed out to even have a conversation with folks like you. So I'm excited to get you guys in front of the group. Um, I know you haven't been to an event before, um, but, you know, why this event? I want to know kind of a little bit of background, um, and I think maybe Neil will kick off on that too. Uh, but, why, you know, why this event? Why part of it? Um, and ultimately, you know, before you answer that, one of the things that, you know, is my goal in this deal is I'd like to get you guys more exposure into the national arena um, so that you guys can be part of um, not only locally where you guys are individually, but also part of the national scene. Um, because like I said, this just does not exist in this industry. So, so why are you, uh, why do you like being part of this event? Well, that's a great question. This is actually our first foray into working with this industry. And it sounds to me like this is an underserved industry when it comes to financial services. So that, to me, spells opportunity, which is um, is really exciting to be able to be a part of something and hopefully to provide a resource that you haven't had heretofore. So that's that's the long and the short of it is we just see there's, there's tremendous opportunity here in an underserved industry. Yeah, yeah I, I, would, I agree. I, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead Fred. No, go ahead, Fred. I cut you off. No, I was, I was I was just going to say that uh, from a compliance uh, standpoint, it's much easier to turn your back uh, on on an industry that that uh, handles cash uh, because the, compl- the compliance uh, burden is uh, is immense. And sometimes you can't even surmount that that burden. So uh, why not deal with an industry that uh, doesn't have as much uh, compliance uh, from from our from our standpoint? And and so we looked at this as as an opportunity uh, to, uh, uh, to to understand what we what we don't know and what we need to figure out and how to make it work. Yeah, it's yeah, interesting. I think, too, I think that. That's- super intelligent response to that because there is so much uh, misinformation outside of our industry about 
who we are and what this industry is about that I think a lot of people are scared to get involved with. So I think that's a great response. And I, I cut you off there, Neil. Go ahead. Well, I just think it's interesting interesting that uh, you're talking about compliance now. And that's one of the things that I've learned and as part of this conversation about your industry is that compliance is is becoming much more of an issue. And, of course, <laughs> Fred and I know compliance well, that's something that we are uh, all too familiar with in our business. So it's just interesting to hear how your business owners are dealing with this now and um, how you're trying to navigate that. Yeah, it's very new. Um, it's not something that even existed 10 or 15 years ago. And so it's very, very new. And, you know, that's it's kind of a nice segue into, you know, like our final question. I mean, you know, what do you think could be the long-term effect or help of, you know, getting folks like you involved in this industry through this event and beyond, you know, I, I'd love to kind of understand or you get your thoughts on that, both of you. Well, I guess to answer that question, it just reminds me of a, a story that I heard about uh, some friends that were going to Hawaii and they were going on vacation. So they jumped on the plane and started west and they were about an hour out over the water having left the West Coast, and suddenly the pilot comes on and announces, I've got good news and I've got bad news, folks. The bad news is our compass is out and we have no clue where we are. But the good news is at 550 knots, we're making good time. So I think the moral to the story is um, we see uh, if we can help provide a compass so that if you're making good time, at least you're moving in the right direction. That's where we can add value. Yeah. I love it. Fred, do you have any, any closing thoughts on that, Fred? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a great story. Uh, uh, the, still the, uh, laughing. Yeah, I am. Uh, that, that is, uh, that's a great story. The, the, uh, the uh, the other th thing that I that I would say is uh, I, I like to quote uh, Judge Leonard Hand. It's a great name for a judge. He never made it to the Supreme Court. He was on the in the D.C. Circuit, but he's quoted more on tax policy than any other uh, any other judge who's ever served. And, and Judge Hand said that there's no patriotic duty to pay more in taxes than anybody is obligated to, uh, to pay as long as we we arrange our affairs legally and i think that's our that is, that is our approach we don't want to make our client famous but we do, don't want our clients to pay more than they have to pay unnecessarily in in, in taxes and um, in order to be able to build wealth not just for themselves for their family for the, for the Build a legacy for the and uh, for the uh, causes and charities that they care about. Yeah, I think I think you're dead on with that. You know, these folks are some of the hardest working individuals that I've ever worked with, and we work in you know resorts and franchises as well in in our parent company. And one of the things that I cannot believe is these guys will work seventy or eighty hours a week, if not more, and um, we want to help them you know, save money and save that kind of money and let them do the things they want and be able to retire well. And that's why we brought folks like you in. So I, I thank you for being part of this uh, group. And I know that we're going to hear from Kathy next, uh, but I'm excited about having you guys on tour with this. Um, you're going to love Florida. If you haven't spent any time down there, it's my favorite resort. And so thank you for being part of this. Thanks for being on uh, the webinar today. And we will definitely hear more from you guys in the future. So thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Vernon.